Future Legends of Electronics Coding. I'm Professor John Gallagher, and let's start writing programs. While we'll tackle a simple print statement here, more importantly, we'll learn lots of beginner basics in running, editing, debugging, and saving code. And these lessons will lay the groundwork for accelerated learning. So if you're new here, be sure you follow the earlier lessons in the playlist, that you've got a board with CircuitPython installed, and that you've installed PyCharm and TO to take advantage of the features shown. Let's code! And now to begin, plug in that Circuit Playground board, Blue Fruit or Express. In our last lesson, we installed PyCharm and TO. We created a PyCharm project and configured it for CircuitPython. Make sure your board is plugged in and let's start PyCharm. Now PyCharm shows the last project you were working on. If you don't see this load up, you can open the project from the Welcome to PyCharm screen. And if you moved your CircuitPython school folder to another location like your documents folder, you can still get to your project by going to the file menu, selecting open, then navigating to the CircuitPython school folder, finding your project, clicking it, then clicking open. Now your board should have a file on it named code.py. That file is added to all new boards and we also updated it during our lesson on libraries, examples, and circup. So let's open that file now. Over on the left hand side in the project column, there's a heading for CPB-project. That's our project name. If you don't see the indented headings underneath this, click the exposure triangle next to the project name so that it points down. Then click the triangle next to CircuitPy so that points down. And you should see all of the files that are on the CircuitPy volume. In my case, that's a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Warning, some of these files and folders are invisible on the board. Let me show you. If I head over to the finder and I open up the CircuitPy volume, I only see these files and folders. But over here in PyCharm, I see all these files and folders. Now on the Mac, I can toggle hidden files to show or hide by typing shift command period. And now I see a bunch of items that were hidden. You really shouldn't mess with hidden items, so I'm going to toggle to hide them by typing shift command period again. And for my students, you might have boards previously used by other students, and there may be other files in here besides boot underscore out dot text. Leave that. Also leave code.py and leave your lib folder if it's spelled in lowercase lib. Now don't delete any of the hidden files or folders, but anything else you can delete. For example, there's a good chance that there are sound folders on your board. They might have wave or mp3 files in them. Those take up a lot of space. You can delete any extra .py files, any uf2 files you can delete. Now let's head back to PyCharm and we'll open our code.py file. This is the program that runs and executes whenever we turn on our board, reset our board, and code.py will execute even when any files are saved on the board. And that could be any file, not just changes to our code.py. So let's double click to open code.py, not underscore code.py, but code.py. That's under the circuit.py folder that we see over here on the left. And if you completed the previous lesson on libraries, example code, and circ up, this is the example code that we saved on on our computer, the one that responds when you touch the different touchpads. Don't worry about understanding it. In fact, let's delete it and start from scratch. I'm going to select all the code. That's Command A on the Mac, Control A on Windows, and press the Delete key. And for our first line of Python code, let's add a command to print something out. The command to do this is print, P-R-I-N-T, all lowercase. But I'm not going to type the word print all at once. I'm first going to type just a lowercase p, and oh, up pops code completion. This is PyCharm's way of letting me know this is a list of all of the commands that have a p in them. Now, your list may or may not have print up top. That's a popular statement and one that I've used in the past, so PyCharm might eventually put your print up top, too, if it's not there. But you can scroll and find print. And now look what happens if I type an R after the P. These are all the commands that have both P and R in them. So code completion narrows things down. And if I type in an I, so it says P-R-I, this shows just one option, print. And if I press return, PyCharm completes the print statement and it adds an open and closing parenthesis, putting my cursor in between. Those parentheses are required for Python statements called functions. Those are sort of the verbs of programming. Print is a function that prints things out. And so one of the nice things about PyCharm is is it'll type code for me. And by selecting something from code completion, not only can you type code faster, it also helps make sure that you don't have a spelling error or a typo, which would prevent your code from running. Now to get Python to print something out, we enclose it in quotes. Those could be single quotes or double quotes. I usually use double quotes since that's what most of the CircuitPython docs use. And watch, as I type my first double quote, 
PyCharm adds the closing double quote, and it puts the cursor between the two quotes. Nice. Now I'll enter something between the quotes that I want to print out. Everybody writes hello world. I think that's so hackneyed. I never write hello world. I'm going to write circuit python is cool exclamation point. Now this text between the double quotes is called a string in computing. That stands for a group of characters that are strung together one after another and every computer language has the data type string. You enclose strings between quotes and here's another thing to notice. PyCharm pretty prints the line of code. For my PyCharm appearance configuration, the function print is sort of purple, the parens are black, and the string, including the double quotes, is in green. Now this will be super handy because if you make a mistake in your code, like if I delete the starting double quote, notice that the string is no longer green, and you'll eventually become used to the different colors that you expect to see, and if the colors look off, that'll indicate that there's probably a problem. Now, PyCharm can also offer another hint that there are problems. You see the red squiggly underlines here? If I hover my cursor over this first wavy red line, I see a pop-up that says unresolved reference circuit Python. Now that's not very user-friendly. It just means that the print statement doesn't know what I want to do inside the parentheses. Things don't look normal as far as circuit Python is concerned. So I can fix this problem by once again adding the double quote in front of circuit Python. Pretty print shows my string in green and my error lines go away. And if I delete the closing parenthesis, you need an open and closing parenthesis parens, I see a wavy line at the end, hover my cursor over it, and it says semicolon or closing parenthesis expected. That error message is a bit more helpful. We'll add the closing parenthesis and the error goes away. So let's see the results of this printing out. Here's what we need to do. This is where we use that TO program that we installed in the last lesson. So let's go over to the left-hand column and look at these icons that line up vertically toward the bottom. Find this one for the icons that are grouped together. It's probably fourth from the top of this little grouping here. It looks like a square with a greater than symbol and a dash inside. If you hover your cursor over, the tooltip will say, this is the terminal. Click this and it opens a pane or section of PyCharm that acts just like the terminal program that we used in the earlier lesson. Yes, there is is a terminal program built into PyCharm and it's super handy. Now to make the terminal act like a sort of window linking your CircuitPy board, in our case our CPB, to the program that we just wrote so we can see that printed output, we'll start up the TO program. But the commands aren't super straightforward for this. We need to figure out what the board is named that's connected to our computer. And unfortunately, it doesn't have an easy name to remember like CPB or Circuit Playground Bluefruit. We're gonna enter a command that will let us find what it's named. Even though it's not user-friendly, you probably wanna write this down eventually you'll memorize it. I'll show you tips to more easily enter this later on. Now that command is, and it's all lowercase, ls space slash dev slash tty period asterisk, just like this, then press return. And since your board is plugged in, you're going to see a listing of things that we can connect to and look for the one that says USB modem in it. For me, that's this line here, slash dev slash TTY dot USB modem. You probably have the same thing, but it might have a different number after it. What I want you to do is to highlight this whole number from the slash DEV through the number after USB modem. With this highlighted, copy it on the Mac command C, Windows control C, then click down here after the percentage prompt in the terminal, and I'm going to enter TO, T I IO space and then paste in what I just copied command V on Mac control V on Windows then press return I'll see some lines that state that I'm connected to my board we just ran TO we connected to our board and notice when you don't see a percentage sign prompt we're no longer entering commands in the terminal instead we have what's called a direct serial connection with our board our circuit pi volume and when TO is running like it is here it can show us the output of our program any errors that occurred when running our program, and it can give us access to a sort of programming scratch pad called the REPL, which we'll discuss later. No percentage prompt after opening the terminal pane? Then we must be in TO. That's showing a serial connection to our CircuitPy board. So now let's head back up to the code with the print statement. Click any place inside this pane, and I should have done this earlier. I'm gonna increase the font size by typing Control Shift greater than symbol a few times. And I want you to notice this. You see the tab up here that says code.py? That's the name of my file, my Python program. Well, in the last lesson, we configured PyCharm to show the unsaved changes indicator. The blue dot here is that indicator. We have unsaved changes. And when I save, I want you to notice what happens. This blue dot is gonna go away. So we'll save in the Mac, that's Command, S in Windows, it's Control S. Remember, saving something to the CircuitPy volume will execute code.py. The file will save, the blue dot will go away, and we'll see some output in the terminal for the print statement that we just wrote. So I'll type Command S, do that right now, or Control S Windows, 
and sometimes it takes as long as five seconds, but ho oh, ho, TO shows some output in the terminal window. And if you can't see it all, you can scroll up. I get a message that the board rebooted, code.py is run, and here's the output. Here's the print statement, CircuitPython is cool. Then it says code done running, nice. And if you look over at your CPB board, you'll see that it flashes green every five seconds. This means that the code ran with no errors and now it's done. In the prior lesson, we briefly mentioned that two red flashes mean there's an error. No error here. One green flash every five seconds means we're done running. No errors. We're looking good. Now, also notice the name of our file code.py in the tab above. We have no blue ball in there right now because we've saved our changes. There are no unsaved changes. But let's make a change to our file. Instead of CircuitPython is cool, let's say CircuitPython is awesome. And look, as soon as I made the change, the blue dot next to code.py is back. Now let's save again. Command S on the Mac, Control S on Windows. The file saves, the blue dot goes away. The code.py file once again executes on our board. If you don't see things again, you can scroll the output in your terminal window. And here is the output. CircuitPython is awesome. Nice. Now here's something new students often do. If I click in the terminal, notice that the terminal icon is highlighted to show that I'm in here. If I press any key, as it says up here, ah, I enter something called the REPL. That's spelled R-E-P-L. It actually stands for Read, Evaluate, Print Loop. You'll know you're in the REPL when you see three greater than symbols like this. Also, the CPB will light up in all white lights. Now this is an area where you can enter single lines of code and see output. We're gonna talk more about this later, but I don't wanna be in here. But up here it says how I can get out of this. Just type control D. So we'll do that now. Then we can see that our code runs again. We see the updates in TO. Cool. Now before we finish up our print lesson, I want to show you how we can save our work using a different name and a different location. This is useful if you want to make a backup of the code that you wrote. And also for my students, I'm going to ask you to submit certain code with specific names for the files that they've written. So let's save this code.py file to our computer. Let's head up to the file menu, select Save As. Now, unfortunately, PyCharm does not show the standard Save dialog box that you'd see in Mac or Windows. Directory here does let you select where you want to save the file. So to change this, click the horizontal ellipses here, the three dots. Some people call this the horizontal kebab. This brings up a familiar file navigation box. I'm going to navigate to where my CircuitPython school folder is. Mine is on the desktop and I'll head into CircuitPython school, but I won't head into my project folder. I'm going to save my CircuitPython files at the same level as my project. So just click open. We can see that the to directory field now saves to the Circuit Python school folder and let's give this file a new name. Let's call it awesome-print.py. Click OK. This saves this. This puts the new file in another tab. So since awesome-print is in a different file in a different name saved to a different location, which is our CircuitPython school folder, we see that in one tab. In this other tab, we have the code.py file where it's saved to the CircuitPy volume on our board. Now, sometimes you might wonder, hey, how can I get my backup code and put it back on my board? Well, let's close the awesome print file by clicking on the X next to its name in the tab. Now we only have code.py up. Let's make a change to this code so we know we've changed it. Why don't we change the string to read CircuitPython is fantastic. And then let's save and execute this with Command S or Control S. It might take a second or two, but we see TO output in the terminal shows CircuitPython is fantastic. Nice. Now, if I want to replace this code with the previous backup code in awesome-print, I can go to the file menu, select open, navigate to my CircuitPython school folder. Mine's on the desktop. Here it is, awesome-print. I'm going to double click to open this up. PyCharm loads this in a separate window. We see the other tab up here. I'm going to highlight the text in this file, command A to select all on the Mac, control A and Windows, then copy it, command C in the Mac, control C and Windows. Then I'll close awesome prints window by clicking on the X in the tab, I can highlight my code in code.py, paste the code that I just copied over top of this, save my code again. It takes a few seconds, but I can see the old output show. CircuitPython is awesome. Nice. Now I want to give you some challenges to work through before we start the next lesson. Apply what you've learned. First, I want you to write some code that says, I am becoming a coding legend. It should print that out on one line. Save this file as legend-print.py. Then create another program with three print statements that prints a haiku. If you don't know what a haiku is, it's a Japanese poem with three lines. The first line has five syllables. The second line has seven syllables. The third line has five syllables. Here is an example of a programming haiku that I printed out. 
write an original haiku. If you've hit a creative wall, ask your favorite AI to write one for you, give it a topic. Then when you have this printing three lines, save this as haiku-print.py. My students will be told how to submit this online. And even though we only worked through the print command, we did have some big learning in our first code lesson. We tackled some very important beginner basics. We learned about the print command and strings. We learned to work with coding in PyCharm, learning about code completion, pretty printing, and how to recognize and correct some errors. We use TO in the PyCharm terminal. We learn the green flash every five seconds on a circuit playground shows that your code is done executing without errors. We entered and exited the REPL. We made backups and restored Python programs in PyCharm. And you tackle challenges, legend and haiku. You'll find that your magnificent geeky skills really start to accelerate from here, so stay tuned for more lessons as you prepare to make something awesome.